Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ bless. This is Captain Matthew with another 15 minutes with the captain's whip. Officer Micah. So today's topic is the tongue, life or death. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with Sirach, oh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Because a lot of things we say, we don't understand that there is power in the tongue. So let's get that out of the scriptures real quick. The book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Come on. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. What? Death and life are are in the power of the tongue. So words do matter and words do hurt. Read that again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Come on. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So whether you love life or death, that is in the power of your tongue. So we got to be mindful about the words that we speak. So let's go ahead and get into it. Give me Sirach chapter 37, verse 18. The book of Sirach chapter 37 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. For a manner of things appear mm -hmm. good. And evil, life and death. Come on. But the tongue. But the what? But the tongue ruleth over them continually. What? But the tongue ruleth over them continually. So you gotta you gotta be mindful. We all must be mindful about the things that we say out of our mouths. That's why the scriptures give us clear instructions on how to deal. And coming out of this Babylonian system, many of us speak death. When you look at the foolish music, man. You know, the, the TV shows, the imagery, it's all death that we speak. And then what do we do? We act upon those things. So we got to be careful. The scriptures tell us out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does speak. Let's keep it moving, though. Let's give me James chapter 3. We're going to read from 1 down to 6. The book of James chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on. My brethren, mm -hmm. be not many masters. So it's already a warning. If you want to be a wise teacher, you want to be a, a, a bishop, According to 1 Timothy 3, watch this. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So the higher you go, the the the, the greater the stakes, if you will, because you are set over the uh, flock of the most high's uh, you know, his people. Flock. Come on. For in many things we offend all. Come on. If any man offend not in word, if any man do what? Offend not in word. Come on. The same as a perfect man. Letting you know them offenses that life and death is in the tongue. Come on. And able also to bridle the whole body. Because if you could discipline that mouth, you could discipline that whole body. That even go when they're eating, too. Do you understand that life and death in the power of the tongue, too? That go into how we eat. But that's another subject. Come on. Verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth mm -hmm. that they may obey us. A little bit can control a whole horse. A horse weighs like, what, 800 pounds or something like that? A, ton, yeah. a little bit like this could go in his mouth. You could steer that whole horse. Come on. And we turn about their whole body. Mm -hmm. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven up fierce winds, uh -huh. yet they are turned about with a very small L. Well, you see the little rudder on the back of the boat. You got a whole uh, naval destroyer. It's that little fin on the back that turned that whole boat around. Come on. Whithsoever the governor listed. Mm -hmm. Even so, the tongue is a little member. So it's comparing the bit in the horse's mouth, the, the rudder on the ship to the tongue. Come on. The tongue is a little member uh -huh. and boasts his great things. A little member boasts many great and foolish things. Come on. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Mm. Come on. And the tongue is a fire. Come on. A world of iniquity. The Bible says the tongue is a world of iniquity, meaning it's a whole other realm of evil that could come out of the mouth. The death. Come on. So is the tongue among our members, mm -hmm. that it defileth the whole body. It what? Defileth the whole body. Uh-huh. And set it on fire, the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. Meaning you know what? You, with your mouth, can take you straight to destruction. Give me that Matthew chapter 5. I mean 15. That, that little member of your mouth could get you put straight to death. So it's not a game out here. We got to, as we repent, we got to learn the things what not to say. Because we were very harsh and abusive one to another with our tongue. Come on, read that. The book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Not that which goes into the mouth defileth the man, mm -hmm. but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Damn. Is that it on that? That's it. Now go back to James. Go back to James. So where do you think James got that from? He heard Christ say that thing. That tongue can defile a whole man. You'll hear somebody, a brother be quiet. As soon as a brother get to talk, and you're like, damn, I thought this brother had wisdom. Come on, man. Read that. The book of James chapter 3 and verse, verse 6. Yeah, read verse 6 again. Come on. And the tongue is a fire, mm -hmm. a world of iniquity. Mm -hmm. So was the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature. 
and it is set on fire of hell. So that thing is a very dangerous weapon. Why do you think they push the evil communications in our community? We ought to see that's the power of the tongue. Come on. For every kind of beast and of birds mm -hmm. and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed mm. and has been tamed of mankind. Damn. But the tongue. But what? But the tongue. The tongue. Can no man tame. Damn. It is an unruly evil. It is unruly evil. Come on. Full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. All right. Let's see if the scriptures say that some more. Give me Sirach chapter 28. I want verses 17 through 21. Because think, think about what poison does. Like when you get poison, you don't just instantly die. Slowly. You understand? You you die over time. Like you got to think about people that have been verbally, uh, verbally abused. They're slowly dying from the inside, just like poison. That's why it compares the tongue to poison. Let's get that out of Sirach chapter 28. The book of Sirach chapter 28 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. Yeah, we've seen that during our captivity. Many strokes of the whip put marks in the flesh. Come on. But the stroke of the tongue. But what? But the stroke of the tongue. The what? Breaketh the bone. Hold on now. That thing say breaketh the bones. Man, that mm -hmm. thing destroys the spirit, man. Come on. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, mm -hmm. but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. And you think about all the people the white man killed. You mean to tell me the tongue done put more people to death than that? But you got to think about that weapons of mass destruction, that 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 campaign. That tongue started a whole world killed thousands, tens of thousands or, or hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, man. And then they're getting poisoned with the... Uh, Depleted uranium rounds and everything, all because the tongue told many lies, man. Come on, keep reading though. Watch this. Well, as he that is defended from it mm -hmm. and have not passed through the venom thereof. Have not passed what? Through the venom thereof. That's why the Bible says that thing is a poison, killing you slowly. Come on. Who hath not drawn the yoke thereof, mm -hmm. nor hath been bound in her band. Damn, that thing letting you know. That tongue, you can tear somebody up with that tongue. That's why the scriptures give us the remedy to fix that evil communication we got. But let's keep it moving. Though. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 9. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 9. Because, you know, people think that's a new thing. But our forefathers dealt with the evil tongue of our, of our own people, man. You know, we we very evil, man. The scriptures got that thing recorded. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Oh, that my head were water mm -hmm. and my eyes a fountain of tears, mm -hmm. that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. So he had compassion on his people because we were being put to death because of our evils. Come on. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, mm -hmm. that I might leave my people and go from them, mm -hmm. for they be all adulterers. Damn. An assembly of treacherous men. Because he said, man, I got to get up out of here, man. The Negroes are so crazy. I, I I got to bounce. But watch. Come on. And they bend their tongue. They do what? And they bend their tongues. So he said adulterers, but then he going to say they bend their tongues to do what? Like their bow for lies. Like crystal clear, man. <laughs> Come on. But they are not valued for the truth upon the earth. Our people name lies. Read that in Isaiah chapter 30. Come on. For they, for they proceed from evil to evil. A lot of people hop from evil to evil, and most of the time, it start with the tongue. Come on. And they know not me, saith the Lord. They don't know the Lord. All they know is folly. They know uh, uh, the latest rap music, drill music. Come on. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, mm -hmm. and trust ye not in any brother. Because our people are wicked as hell. Come on. For every brother will utterly supplant, mm -hmm. and every neighbor will walk with slander. They will do what? Will walk with slander. That's that unruly tongue, that poison. That's why the scriptures say, blessed he who's well defended from it. Come on. And they will deceive everyone as neighbor, mm. and will not speak the truth. They will not speak the truth. Read. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. Read them. What were they tongue? They have taught their tongue to speak lies. You see what's going on with this thing? That's the world of it. They done made a whole nother fantasy realm from talking the foolishness out their mouth. Come on. And wear themselves to commit iniquity. Right, like your Jerry Springers, your uh, uh, Wendy Williams and all that foolish table talk. Red table. Yeah, ta real, real table talk. What the hell is this, man? A, a world of iniquity, man. Read. Verse 6. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Mm -hmm. Through deceit they refuse to know me. So through lies, just like our people do today. They say, God loves everybody. They, all, it's all evil and lies coming out of their mouth anytime you deal with a Christian. Straight lies. Come on. 
saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will melt them Bam. and try them. For how shall I do it for the daughter of my people? He, their tongue is as an arrow shot out. Mm. It speaketh deceit. You see what's going on? Come on. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he layeth his weight. You see that? He talking, man, everything all good. Shalom, brother. And he about to put you straight to death. But as soon as you turn your back, he's speaking much evil of you, man. That thing is wicked as hell, man. Let's keep it moving, though. Go back. Let's go back to Sirach chapter 28. Watch this. Verse 13. The book of Sirach chapter 28 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Curse the whisper. The Bible says what? Curse the whisper. That's why the Lord said he's going to go out there and bring that fire to our people because that damn unruly tongue. The Bible says curse the whisperer, man. Come on. And double-tongued. Uh-huh. Because we just read that every man will speak deceit to his neighbor. He come to you in the spirit of uh, talking peace, but he got the spirit of, of murder on his mind. Come on. For such have destroyed many that were at peace. You see that? Uh, you see what's going on with us. They trying to destroy us. We at peace. The scriptures tell us to live peacefully with all that. We getting the drugs, guns, and all that out of the community, but yet they call us a hate group. That's the power of that wicked tongue, man. Come on. A backbiting tongue mm -hmm. have disquieted many. You see that backbiting tongue has disquieted many. Disquieted is a term that means call it, causing someone to feel uh, anxious or anxiety. Like you look at it now, they got the cyberbullying. You understand? Like we might laugh at it in the older generation, but that thing has a serious effect on people that's, um, you know, especially the younger generation that grew up uh, in front of the computer screens, man. That thing be destroying people's minds, man, and, and, and killing the spirit. Straight up. Come on. And driven from the nation to nation. Damn. So somebody because the evil tongue got ran about their house. Come on. Strong cities have it pulled down. We see the exact. The white man coming in with propaganda and lies all the time. Bomb, bomb places to hell. Literally. Come on. And overthrown the houses of great men. You see that? The regime change. They did that man well no yeah, he went down there. They say he killed all his people. Whole time this dude worked for the CIA. As soon as Panama was about to get control of the canal, they turned around and spoke all kinds of lies and went in there, hijacked the canal. Come on. Verse 15. A backbiting tongue mm -hmm. has cast out virtuous women. See that? Because that's the whole point. Like you reading the scriptures, they don't want our people don't want the righteous in the way. That's why they come up with slander to get us out the way. But now we here to stay, family. Straight up. Come on. And deprive them of their labors. Mm -hmm. So many people got lied. What they what they call it? They cancel culture. They like like they did the brother bear. Oh, our brother bear. Oh, uh, okay. oh, yep. Deprived the man of his labor. 700 white women came out of nowhere. Bill Conley had to rape somebody in the 80s. Come on, man. Come on. Other lies, man. Read that again. Verse 15, yep. A backbiting tongue hath cast out virtuous women mm -hmm. and deprived them of their labor. That's today we call that cancel culture. Read. Whoso hearkeneth unto it shall never find rest. So you out there listen to all them lies and slander. Give me that in Isaiah 48 and 22, man. You want to sit down there and listen to the uh, uh, Jennifer Hudson show, Jerry Springer, you understand, uh, Ricky Lake, you know, for the old heads. See what the Bible say, man. The book of Isaiah, chapter 48 mm -hmm. and verse 22. 22. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. So you ain't going to find no rest because you wicked as hell. You listen to lies, slander, and rumors. The Bible said there's no uh, peace or rest for the wicked. Understand that thing, man. That's why the Bible said, curse be the whisperer. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to Psalms chapter 31 and verse 13. The book of Psalms chapter 31 and verse 13. Come on. For I have heard the slander of many. Mm. Fear was on every side. Damn. While they took counsel together against me. You see that? They devised to take away my life. So you see what King David prophesied in the spirit, man. Give me Sirach 9 and 18. Watch this. Because we got many of our forefathers that were slandered and lied upon, and, and, and some of them got put to death because of the lies of slander. The book of Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. A man of an ill tongue is dangerous in his city. A man of a what? Ill tongue is dangerous in his city. Because that brother could spread lies and rumors and get you put to death. Come on. 
and he that is rash in his talk shall be hated. So you got another brother that's rash in his talk. Ain't nobody going to fool with that brother. That brother is just accustomed to opprobrious words, man. A foolish brother. But let's keep it moving about this dangerous man. Let's get to the example of slander and how it can cost you your life, man. Give me John chapter 11, man. So we're going to see that the, 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 the king was slandered. How you slander the king of kings, man? Our people are evil as hell. Evil Negroes. The book of John chapter 11 and verse 34. Come on. And that he was, and he that was dead came forth. So this is talking about Lazarus. Bound hand and foot with mm -hmm. grave clothes. Mm -hmm. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto him, loose him and let him go. Come on. Then many of the Jews, which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. So don't believe the foolish lie that he came to his own, his own received or not. Those are mineral lies out of that dangerous, deadly, venomous tongue to put you back to sleep under white supremacy. Come on. But some of them, uh, but come on, but here, here, here go, but some of them did what? Went their ways to the Pharisees mm -hmm. and told them that what things Jesus had done. Come on. Then gathered the chief priests. And the Pharisees, the council, and said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. That's the council they got today. Man, what we going to do about IUIC, man? They, they resurrected the mind of the Negro, man. We spent 400 years making Megan the Stallions and little Nas X's. But guess what? The word of the Most High is, is reversing the curse. So now they in their council. But let's keep it back with Christ, though. Come on. If we let him thus alone, mm -hmm. all men will believe on him. Come on. And the Romans shall come. The Romans, that is their God. The white man. Come on. And take away both our place and nation. So here they go. The here goes. That was the council. Said, you know what? If we let him do his thing, he healing people with his words and all that. Oh, no. We got the, well, where's the council? Let's go. Let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark chapter 14. Let's go to Mark chapter 14. So with that wicked council, let's see what they concocted, man. The book of Mark, chapter 14, and verse 55. Mm -hmm. And the chief priests and all the council start for witness against Jesus to put him to death. Damn, you see the council, they wanted to put Jesus to death. Come on. And found none. For many bear false witness against him. Did what? Bear false witness against him. Well, here go our people. Many bear false witness, man. That unruly, evil, deceitful tongue. Come on. Yeah. Witness agreed not together. Meaning what? They couldn't corroborate their stories, man. Come on. And they wrote, and they arose sudden, mm -hmm. and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. Mm -hmm. And within three days, I will build another made with our hands. You hear that? Come on. But neither so did the witness agree together. Mm -hmm. And the high priest in the midst, and asked Jesus, saying, Answer us thou nothing. Come on. What is what is it with these witnesses against thee? But what did he do? But he held his peace mm. and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, mm. the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. Mm. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And them wicked evil niggas going to be back on the earth when Christ comes back. He's going to put them straight to death. Straight up. Come on. Then the high priest rent his clothes. They're the thing, man. That's that's all that stuff for sure. This brother gonna rip his clothes. Come on. That nail and, and saith, uh huh. What need we any for the witness? Mm. Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. You see that? Because of slander. That's the way our people roll. But we got to change the mindset. So the Lord has put his spirit out in those last days to cleanse us of that evil tongue and the wicked ways. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. So let's get on what we're supposed to be doing with our tongue. So the book of Proverbs chapter 21, verses 23. Now see what the scriptures got for us. The book of Proverbs chapter 21. And verse 23, mm -hmm. whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. He said, you'll be able to get rest. Because remember, we read that in Sirach, whoever hogging on the lies ain't going to be able to find rest, man. So the scriptures say, you keep your, your mouth and your tongue, you keep your soul from trouble. You understand that thing? Give me Psalm chapter 37, verse 30. Because, you know, our people, man, we got out there talking all kinds of reckless talk, man. Next thing you know, it costs you your life. The book of Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 30. So let's see what our forefather, the prophet King David said, man. 
The mouth of the righteous. The what? The mouth of the righteous. The what? Speaketh wisdom. It, the what? Speaketh wisdom. So the mouth of the righteous is not talking about uh, where the hoes at or, uh, you know, what what's going on out there? The flavor of the day, man. With a... Uh, uh, what a black man with good jobs at. Right. All the foolishness. Place the N-word. Right. Right. Read that again, man. Verse 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, mm -hmm. and his tongue talketh of judgment. So that's the mouth of the righteous. What's the judgment? The Lord's judgment. The law, statutes, and commandments. Not out there how many points LeBron had. How many triple doubles he had last week and all this. Just foolish, dumb talk, man. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah, how many views you got? The advanced ADHD. Our people got the attention of a, a fruit fly now. Mess around with that wicked device on that TikTok, man. More evil communication lines. But we gonna keep. We gonna deal with that uh, on another show. Let's keep it moving though. Uh, give me uh, Proverbs uh, chapter fifteen, verse two. Uh, not nah, yeah. You started one. Read verse one. The book of Proverbs chapter fifteen and verse one. Mm -hmm. A soft answer turneth away wrath. So that go back to what we read in uh, Proverbs twenty one twenty three about you wise with your tongue, man. You are gonna have rest. So you have got skill with your your mouth. You will be able to de escalate a situation as opposed to escalating it. And now you got into a traffic altercation because now you can't control your mouth. You get put to death. Foolish man. Read. But grievous words stir up anger. That's, that's life and death in the tongue. Come on. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. So the tongue of the wise man uses knowledge aright. He's talking about judgment. His mind is in the scriptures. Therefore, his conversation, his tongue will speak of those things that his mind is set upon. Come on. But the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. Man, did you check the draft out? The Redskins got set. Brother, what are you talking about, man? We're all going to hell in the hand. Let's get inflation. Banks is collapsing. And a brother talking about the NFL draft. What? Come on, man. Millions of people losing their jobs. Right. That's that's the foolishness, man. All because of that TV with that venomous tongue. Keeping Negroes uh, sedated in, in that matrix, man. Go go to uh, go to uh, back to Sirach. Let's go back to Sirach because there's a lot of wisdom in Sirach, man. Give me chapter uh, chapter four, verse twenty four. The book of Sirach, chapter four and verse twenty four. Mm -hmm. For by speech wisdom shall be known. So when you hear man's communication and the words come out of his mouth, eloquent words out of scripture, dark saying, you know, by this brother's speech, like they said, you know what? These men are unlearned men, but we could tell they was with Christ. Because by their speech, man. Like when Peter, when Peter, when the, the, the sister was riding out Peter, he said, nah, by the way, you tell I know you is real Christ. Because he talked with wisdom. Everybody else in there talking foolishness, he coming in there talking wisdom. She's like, nah, you're not talking a regular dumb mess. You with him. They didn't give away. Read it again. For by speech, wisdom shall be known. Uh -huh. And learning by the word of the tongue. So when you hear dumb, foolish conversations coming out of our people's mouths, because there's no learning of wisdom there. They hearkening on the lies and deceit. All the stuff out here is all deception, man. If it's not coming out, thus saith the Lord, it's all deception. Because this man is not set up to entertain us. Let's let's make that crystal clear. Everything come out of his mouth is venom, man. Keep it moving, though. Go back to our Proverbs chapter 15. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. So that's their life. The scriptures say a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. Come on. And a word spoken in due season, how good is it? You know what? This brother has the wisdom with his words knowing when, where, and how to deliver a message to uplift the people. He's not just out there just speaking wisdom in the middle of the night while everybody sleep. No, this brother's wisdom is tailored with the scriptures. And his tongue go ahead, executes those wise sayings, man. Understand it, because his mind is what? Meditating in the laws of the Most High. So let's go to Sirach chapter 6. So Sirach chapter 6, verse 5. So with that with that tongue and that wisdom, what's going to happen? Read that. The book of Sirach chapter 6 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Be in peace with many. No, no, 6 and 5, brother. 6 and 5, brother. Oh, 6 and 5. Sweet language will multiply friends. So the brother with the wise tongue is just going to multiply friends. Come on. And a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greeting. Okay, so what does that mean? Go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. 
And so we got to understand, it's not talking about just friends out here. You know, it's buddies that you go to the bar with and y'all watch uh, 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 sports games all day. No, read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. So what is this going into? The man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Come on. And the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. So when it says, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Give me Sirach 44 and 4. So we heard about sweet language multiplying friends. A man shall be satisfied with the good fruit of his mouth. Okay, watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 34 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Leaders of the people. What? Leaders of the people. So for brothers multiplying friends, guess who Christ said his friends was? Leaders of the people, come on, by their counsel mm -hmm. and by their knowledge of learning, come on, meet for the people, mm -hmm. rise and eloquent in their instruction. You know what? They knew when and where and what to say to mobilize the people. That's what you see with the bishop, uh, with Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawasai, Bishop Kanata, deacons, the cabinets, and officers. These men are eloquent in their speech. They're multiplying their friends. What? Their friends are those keeping the commandments of God. Understand it. That's not talking about you out there, uh, you know, everybody on the block and they all in the matters of foolishness. No, this is talking about the, the good fruit. It's talking about what? Going out there, gathering the 12 tribes of Israel. Understand that. Give me Hebrews 3 and 13. So with that good tongue, that sweet language, what are you supposed to do with that? Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. Come on. But exhort one another daily. Do what? Exhort one another daily. So that's that sweet language multiplying friend. Exhortation with the word of God, man. That's why you read in the scripture, say the word was sweet in my mouth, man. That's what it's talking about. Not uh, uh, this brother out there, he, he got crafty words of men's wisdom. No, not at all. Come on. While it is called today, uh -huh. lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. And where is that sin more than likely going to come from? From some venomous mouth, some stupid TV advertising, some dumb rap music. Got your mind all baptized here in Babylon. Or some foolish pork chop eating pastor speaking straight venom and lies, man. Keep it moving, though. Go to Sirach chapter 21, verse 17. The book of Sirach, chapter 21 and verse 17. Come on. They inquire at the mouth of the wise man. So the, the they inquire, those friends that that sweet language has multiplied, they inquire at the mouth of the wise man. Come on. In the congregation. And when? In the congregation. So that's letting you know what that good, that good fruit is talking about. Building the congregation of the Most High, establishing the 12 tribes again back on the earth. Come on. And they shall ponder his words in their hearts. They're going to ponder that eloquent speech in their mind. Like all of us that hear the lessons coming from the bishops, deacons, the captains, and officers, we ponder on them things like, man, that was some heavy stuff. That was some, that was some good stuff right there. Come on. The knowledge of a wise man shall around, shall abound like a flood. Mm. And his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. You hear that? His counsel is like a pure fountain of what? Of life coming out of his mouth. He not speaking death to the people. He's speaking of life. Jump up to verse 13. So, oh, no. Read, read 17. No, you read. Okay, you did. Okay, you did that. Now, yeah, give me Sirach chapter 10. Give me Sirach. We're going to close out with this. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people. A wise judge is going to do what? Instruct his people. So those are the people who have, that have been multiplied, and he's instructed them to do what? To mobilize them. Come on. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. So through his wise counsel, his eloquent words, words of wisdom, he, his, his government is well ordered. As a result, read, as the judge of the people, it was himself. So as the judge of the people is himself, come on, so on his officers. So on his officers. So the men studying underneath this brother with the wise, eloquent words of the Most High, come on. And with men of man, the ruler of the city is, uh -huh. such are all they that dwell therein. So all praise to the Most High. Let's make sure that we exhort one another that we speak the words of wisdom according to the scriptures. With that, we say shalom. Most High Christ bless. Shalom. Most High Christ bless. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community.
strong enough.